back to winemastery.co.uk. My name's John Lightfoot. This is... John Murphy. And on this occasion, we're getting close to this when this is being released, getting close to Christmas, a new year, and all other celebratory events happening. So we thought we'd uh, sample some champagne. And John will give you some advice in terms of choosing champagne. You can pay a reasonable, if you think £20 is reasonable. <laughs> when you can get Prosecco for 10. <laughs> but you can, you can get some reasonable sort of champagne, maybe for 20, or is it reasonable? And then you can pay an awful lot more. I mean, you can pay thousands for oh, more if you, you want you to. Can, you can get silly money, silly money. But I think that's silly money. Mm. No, I, I'm getting close to thinking 20 pounds is silly money, but we're here and we're doing it. We're doing it. So we're kicking off with probably the, the staple, you know, everyone's heard of Moet, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. And I, th I think, uh, how, many, how many are we trying over the course? I think it's, it's four or five. Four or five, okay. Yeah, yeah so it is, it is a nice one to start on. Well, well the Moet, and I must admit, just when you started filming, I took a little sip without even thinking. Did you? I did, I did. Oh. So, uh, well, I'm not going to apologise. You've just got more bubbles than mine. I wonder why that is. Oh, it's coming in nicely there. It's uh, steady in a way. Okay. But yeah, more, I think the, uh, we thought we'd start on the Moy because that's that's the one that everybody knows. Yeah. Everybody knows Moy yeah. Chandon. Um, you know, it, it's in the supermarkets, it's everywhere. They're, they're, it's big business. So we thought we'd start there just to give us a, a good footing to see because the, the rest we have are kind of more. Uh, kind of smaller champagne houses. Yeah. So we're going to test the theory is it better from a small champagne house or, you know? The big one, yeah. And I think there are something like nineteen thousand producers, uh, wine growers in in the uh, Champagne region. I understand. I'm not one hundred percent sure. And you please uh, uh, correct us if we're wrong. But I understand that actually starting in Napoleonic times, where it's to actually sort of get rid of the nobility and the wealth, they had to sort of when they had a will, they had to divide it up amongst their children. So big vineyards sort of really became very small vineyards, and so they are now sort of small family little units, cottage industry almost. Um, I'm just very impressed with the knowledge I have. <laughs> I'm learning, go, go on. It's wonderful what you can get, the knowledge you get when you read just five <laughs> minutes before you do a video. And, and also the, the, other, uh, the other statistic is that there are somewhere around, so in terms of labels, there's somewhere around about over, well not labels because obviously Merrick do a lot of different ones, but yeah, yeah. there's somewhere over a hundred uh, champagne houses. So. Uh, yeah, so there's some to go at, and uh, I think sometimes if you ever sort of go into the champagne area, from what I understand, you can pick up really good champagne for very, very, very low cost mm. uh, from one of these small producers. So that, that doesn't surprise me for me. And, and of course, each champagne house, they have like, what would they call their ordinary um, stuff, and then they will have vintages, and yeah. they, 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 they will produce at least half a dozen different champagnes as well. So putting that into perspective, there's, there's, there's a lot of champagne to go at. Well, also, I, I read that vintage um, champagne needs to be put down for a minimum of 36 years. That's, that's a big investment for companies if they're actually putting stuff down that long. That or is. That's individuals that's as well, because, I mean, who knows you're going to be? I'm 36 years, I, I'd be pushing my luck, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also, yeah, I don't know, it, it blending down 36 years is, is the whole, w w is it any good? Yeah. Well, I don't know, how, well, how, how would they tell? Yeah, I don't know, I don't know, they must, presumably they can tell by the quality of the grapes and the year and the weather and stuff, so mm, I yeah. assume they're experienced in that. Yeah, well you, well, you, do, you do tend to find, uh, which we'll see later as well, is a lot of, a lot of champagne houses won't release uh, what they call a vintage, um, it, unless it is, they say, a very good year, yeah. unless they've had the good year for it. Um, but 30, 36 years, that's a long time. It is a long a time. A long time. It is a long time, yeah. So have you got any of that? No. Oh. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> so, should we try this then? Yes, let's have a go. Let's try this. So, so, I also understand that I've been, I've also read, correct me if I'm wrong, John, that actually the flute glass is, is very typical for a champagne glass. But, uh, you also get the sort of bowl type, the saucer type. Yeah, yeah. But there is also, I understand, a, a wide lip tulip type of glass for. for yeah, it closes up, or, or, you know, that, that, that's slightly kind of, you can see the, 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 the base, it does get wider somewhere, but you can get the tulip ones that really do come in, which is meant to kind of, you know, uh, um, keep, keep the aroma in. Keep yeah, it, yeah. And, and kind of get it more intense so you are getting all that intensity yeah. just from there, whereas here, and especially in the uh, sauces, as you were saying, yeah. can escape very yeah. quickly. Um, I, I get, but then again, it comes down to how seriously you're taking your champagne or, or your wine, you know, how serious you're actually going. But for us, we're playing at it. Okay, we're playing at it. So, what, what, one thing, one thing I've heard, and, and we, we shall see how true this is yeah. as we go, is the um, the size of the bubbles in, in champagne. You can tell a good champagne by the size of the bubble. The 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 kind of 
Yeah. Should we say the cheaper, is that, a, I don't know, the better priced ones yep. tend to have bigger bubbles, whereas the more expensive ones have smaller bubbles, but we shall see as we go on. Okay. But let's give this one a go. So, Morning Shandle. Have you got a tape measure? I just want to measure the bubble. <laughs> we shall we'll just tell by, by, by uh, eye. Okay. Well, now you're going to be able to tell me why I smell it, but to me that just smells like champagne. No, no, I yeah. I can't, I can't. It's quite weak though, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's not a, a strong, powerful nose on that. Very subtle, perhaps I should say, would be a better word rather than weak. For me, for me it smells a bit peppery. Peppery? A bit peppery. And um, one thing which you should get from champagne, which I'm getting there, is it's what they call a very doughy. Okay. You know when you're making, not that I often make bread, but like the, the dough, I mean you can take a, a, a slice of bread and just oh, not, put it to... Oh, not the deer. No, 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 no. I don't know what they smell like. Do you not? <laughs> no. No, yeah, I must go around on a Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> so, but no, it has that, that, that doughy, yeasty, yeasty. That's yeasty, the word, yeasty okay. yeah. yeah. That's the word I'm looking for, yeasty. kind of yeasty. Okay, so, yeah. That's, that's for me, yeah, it smells almost sweet. It smells a bit like um, a cookie. A cookie? A cookie. Okay. Which... One of those big biscuits, you mean? Yeah, yeah, so I'm going to have a taste. Okay. I thought we'd never get around to it. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. For me. Ooh. <clears throat> For me, it tastes like a, a, a like a, a green apple, but quite a, like a crab apple. You know, it has that. Without that, it's not sour, but it has that kind of sour because of the. Acidity is quite harsh in yeah. there, yeah. And I think this is a good time to say, you know, a lot, a lot of people think that they don't like champagne because it can be quite acidic. Yes. And that there's quite a lot of acidity in there. That is a bit um, um, it's like it's aggressive. Quite, yeah. 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 Um, I, I'm not saying that I dislike it, but that wouldn't be one I'd choose. No. And you especially, I mean, do you mind how much? How much did you pay for a bottle? Uh, it was a gift, actually, but I mean, I think I've seen them in uh, sort of supermarkets. I've seen them at various markets around a twenty-five-pound mark. I think is yeah. sort of typical. I have well, seen them for thirty-five as well, the same bottle. But yeah, it depends where you should. Yeah, I, th I think very quite. Well. well, I think a lot of people think that they don't like champagne because, um, you know, the first champagne they would try would be a Moet Chandon, uh, you know, that that ilk of brand. Which, in fairness, you're paying, you know, twenty-five to thirty-five pounds for that. Sometimes it's not enjoyable. No. Do you know what I mean? Like they, and it, they, a lot of people buy champagne for an occasion. Ninety yeah. percent of people who drink champagne, I would say, are drinking it for an occasion. Yeah. Of such. And I think they're pretty glad that they only have it on said occasions because that for me. All, don't get me wrong. Do not get me wrong. I, I I could and I will be drinking that, but it wouldn't be my champagne of choice. No. No. no I agree. I agree. And I, you know, I have heard that you know, sort of people that are in the know don't particularly drink this one because. Obviously, it is produced. It must be popular, but obviously, I think a lot of that has to do with the marketing. You know, if you take a bottle of Moet to someone, you know, if you know nothing about champagne, you take a bottle of Moet, you think, well, you know, I've, I've taken a brand that's respected, and therefore, it's not an insult. I haven't taken something cheap. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. Well, as you said, the marketing comes down. Yeah. We see that in, in, definitely in the drinks industry. I, I imagine in most places, marketing can count for so much. Yeah, the brand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I just sort this. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II uh, is appointed, so obviously they supplied the royal household. Well, we shall see. We shall see. Because I'm later, yes. I've got something interesting for you, John. Ooh. Oh! Ooh. Ooh. We'll, is... we'll, see, we'll see when we get there. All right, all right. Well, should, we've tried that one. Should we try another one? And we're gonna we're gonna try another one that actually isn't uh, quite as well known as this. In fact, it's not very well known at all. But we'll we'll try that one next. Yeah. 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 Okay. We'll see you there. Chin chin. Chin chin.